Hey now, Brawlers, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and it's time for another episode of One Year Later. This is where I take a look back at a game that I reviewed one year ago to see how my opinions may or may not have changed. Uh, in this case, and I'll, it's just a full disclosure, uh, this is more like one year and four days later by the time this is posted. I apologize for being late about this, but this is a game I really wanted to talk about. It's one that I did very, very early on in my channel within the first month of creating the channel, and that is called Boss Monster from Brother Wise Games. This game really blew up on Kickstarter when it was first out, and I did not back it on Kickstarter because I wasn't even into board gaming that much at the time, let alone on Kickstarter. Uh, I actually got the retail copy of it that was missing a lot of the cool stuff like the Zelda looking box and things like that. Uh, but it really, really blew up on Kickstarter, made a ton of money. Um, it was, it's a competitive card game for two to four players, I think it's four, uh, where you actually take control of a boss monster, hence the name, uh, from an 8-bit or 16-bit video game, and you're actually trying to lure heroes into your dungeon in order to kill them and score them as points, and hoping that they don't make it through your dungeon successfully to wound you and possibly kill you and eliminate you from the game. And of course, all the artwork in the game is uh, pixelated artwork that uh, even today is still trendy. I thought that fad would have died by now, but you still see games going up on Kickstarter with that pixelated art. Uh, there's one coming out at Gen Con this week called uh, The Battle at Kemble's Cascade, where it's more like a shoot 'em up so I'm excited for that, but I digress. Um, so I reviewed this game. You can see it's still on my channel. You can go back and watch it if you like. Uh, maybe I'll have a link down in the bottom. And in fact, it's got some really cool effects from my friend Gary at, that he did at the time. So I'm really appreciative to him for that. Um, and appreciative for the fact that, you know, it's one of my most viewed videos. So that's another reason why I wanted to uh, take another look at this and how my opinions might have changed. Now, in the video, I, it's, a, it's mostly a good review because I had just recently gotten the game. I probably played it four or five times by the time I reviewed it. One of the caveats I had in my original review was that I can see this kind of getting, uh, the replayability not being so high after a certain point. I could already feel it by the time I did that review and that's why I mentioned it. Like, is there much more that this game has to offer? And as it turns out, the answer is no. <laughs> sure enough, just after I, well not just after, but after I got done filming that review and posting it, I probably played the game three, maybe four more times after that, and I completely lost my taste for it. What I had feared was true, that there was not enough meat to the game to actually keep me or a lot of the other people I was playing with interested in it, because at its core, while it's got a very cool concept that you're a boss monster trying to drag these heroes down into the dungeon, a la Dungeon Lords, which is a game I still like to play, uh, the fact of the matter is it's just a very, very random take that game with some very bad elements to it that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. The first was player elimination. Now, if this was a much faster game, that wouldn't be at an issue. And Boss Monster is not a tremendously long game, to be sure. But it's long enough. I do remember games of that going over a half hour, over 45 minutes. And when that happens, and the and then you're when you're eliminated very early on and when i say very early on i mean first round that happened once to me and i've seen it happen at least twice to players in the within the first three rounds being killed and then you're just out and it's just like the weirdest feeling because it didn't happen because you made some horrible critical this uh you know poor decision that just completely wrecked your game no it happened because you were unlucky because you just didn't get fantastic rooms like the other players in your first turn. Some very powerful heroes came out that just happened to come to you, maybe because your boss card had a particular symbol on it to drag it into it. And that, you know, that was just a very horrible feeling because uh, it felt like you were just helpless. Like there was nothing that you could do to change your situation whatsoever. The game also has a horrific snowball effect, kind of hand in hand with that, where one player who does a little bit well early in the game is going to continue to do very, very well as the game progresses. You get a few very cool rooms on your belt that have really high uh, bonuses that uh, are the rooms that have all the different symbols on it so it's more likely you're dragging heroes to you. Have that in conjunction with one or two powerful rooms and some of the rooms that, that give you more and more spell cards. That is devastating. It gives you such an edge in the game that you're really just on autopilot for the rest of it. And that was very boring because it makes it really frustrating for the other players. But it also makes it uh, pretty anticlimactic for you as a winner. Like I've had that situation happen uh, several times when I played. Like in the very first game I played, like I trounced the other players. And I'm not bragging about it because I did it and I'm like, I didn't do anything. All I did was just draw really good cards. 
that's how I felt about the game. Uh, I mean, other things I can complain about, just that even though it is a cool theme, again, it just gets repetitive. Um, now, I think that part of this was kind of solved by a lot of the goodies that you could get from the Kickstarter, but guess what? They were exclusives. Um, and this is one of those circumstances where, you know, I, I do the Kickstarter updates. I know a lot about Kickstarter. I know about the ins and outs of it, the pros and cons of it. As far as exclusives go, I've always been somewhat on the fence because I think when they're, when they're done in a case like, let's say, Zombicide, where Zombicide has a lot of exclusive miniatures. Well, the fact is, while those miniatures are really cool, they really do not affect the game. I have never been hurt by the fact that I don't have the Season 1 miniatures for Zombicide. It would have been cool to have Bruce Willis and Machete. Okay, fine. But their characters are not significantly different enough from any of the other characters for it to make any kind of difference in the gameplay whatsoever. However, the exclusives for the Kickstarter for Boss Monster were significant. New bosses to play as, new rooms in the dungeon, uh, new heroes, all kinds of stuff that was not just a, a cosmetic makeover of the box. Significant things that I believe would have improved the replay of the game a lot, but we'll never know. I'll never know because I wasn't able to get them or pay the exorbitant prices for it. Uh, especially since the game just wasn't good enough for me to justify seeking those things out. There has been an expansion, uh, Tools of Hero Kind, I believe it's called. It's supposed to increase the difficulty of the game. And typically when people defend the game, that's what they say. You need to make the game more difficult, make it more brutal. That, that way it's faster and more people die. I don't think that's the problem the game has. I think the problem is that the game is just very, very simple and that there's some poor design choices in so much as keeping players involved in the game. You're either outright eliminated or de facto eliminated, and that's no fun in any game. So I, you know, it's been a year. I would have kind of given this my recommendation a year ago. Now I absolutely cannot. Although I will say this, by pure coincidence, I swear this is just a coincidence, or maybe the company was trying to time it this way, because I got the game around the time it came out at retail. Uh, just yesterday on Kickstarter, they released a digital version of Boss Monster. Well, not released. They're seeking funding for it. And it's already made a lot of money. I'm sure it will fund. And we will have a digital version of Boss Monster. I can actually see this being much better than a physical version. Because it'd probably be faster. They would probably be easier to implement a lot of new types of cards and uh, play modes. Things like that. And because I have a very low, a much lower standard for apps and digital games. Um, so it'll probably be worth it, it'll probably be cheap and not a bad thing, but as a physical game where you have to be, like, be involved with other players and sit down for a significant portion of time, Boss Monster is definitely one that I would skip. There's some innovative things there that I think I'd like, enough that I'd like to see what else that this company comes out with. I don't know that Brotherwise has actually even put out any other games, to be honest, at, at this point. But I'd be interested to see what else they could do, but as of right now, Boss Monster is just a very, very mediocre base from which they can build off of to make other games. That's my two cents anyways. My name is Nick. This has been our one year later look back at Boss Monster, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care.